Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've had a few people reach out to me in the last couple of weeks asking a couple of questions regarding UWorld and other QBanks. For example, one of the questions that I've had asked was, should I do UWorld more than two times or should I look into another QBank? The second question that I've gotten asked is, what can I do to increase my UWorld QBank score? So in this video, I'll be sharing some tips and advice that helped me throughout my step one journey. I want to add that these are the tips and advice that helped me in my journey. And I wanted to share them with you since I am getting some questions regarding this. But I also want to say that to take this with a grain of salt because you might want to do things differently or you might feel differently about UWorld and other QBanks. So again, these are just tips and advice that worked for me. And I hope this helps anyone who's looking for inspiration or ideas on what to do. Also, I want to say please like the video if you liked it, as well as subscribe for more content like this. Now let's get into it. The first thing I want to say about the UWorld QBank is that I use the UWorld QBank more as a learning tool compared to an assessment tool. So since I used the UWorld QBank as a learning tool, I didn't really pay attention to the UWorld scores I would get. Of course, I wanted to see an overall increase in time, but in the beginning, I really wasn't paying attention to the scores I would get. Instead, I would focus more on reviewing the material, reviewing the whole explanation, making sure I get every detail that I needed to know. And why I didn't pay attention to my UWorld QBank scores was because I did my questions random and timed, but other people might be doing their questions untimed and subject-based. So when you compare your UWorld score to the average score, it doesn't really tell you much. Because again, you might be doing your questions timed and random, but other people will probably be doing it untimed and subject-based. So again, you want to take that score with a grain of salt. What's important about your UWorld QBank score is that you do want to see an increase. So what I mean by this is if you constantly see yourself getting 60% for about two or three weeks, then you might want to change up something. For example, you might want to spend a little bit more time reading the UWorld explanations and making sure you understand every concept they're presenting. And secondly, you might just want to spend more time reading First Aid or Pathoma. The main thing I want to say is that when you compare your QBank score to the average QBank score, it's not really helping you because, again, you don't know how other people are doing their questions. And that's a huge factor because step one, you can't pick how you're going to do your questions for the exam. It's always timed and random. So, again, because you don't know how other people are doing their practice questions, it's not really helping you by comparing your score to the average. And to raise your QBank score, for example, if you feel like you're in a plateau getting the same QBank score for two or three weeks, you want to change something up in your schedule or resources that you're using. Maybe add another resource such as Pathoma if you haven't already added Pathoma. Pathoma is a great resource. Or just spend more time reviewing the questions like I mentioned earlier. Another thing you could do if you haven't tried this is that you can make Anki cards on concepts that you may be weak in. So when you're reviewing the questions and you come across a concept that you're not 100% on, make an Anki card on that concept. Anki is another great source if you use it every day during your dedicated time. It's an amazing resource. Now the UWorld score that you do want to pay attention to and the UWorld score that should matter to you is your UWorld assessment score. You know, the UWorld self-assessment one and two, those two scores are very important. And they are the scores that you should pay more attention to compared to the QBank score. The second UWorld assessment is very important in my experience because I found that most similar in terms of question style and the length of the questions as well as the difficulty of the questions, I found that most similar to my step. Also, I found the score that I got on my second year world assessment was closest to my step one score. So this is the score that you should be paying most attention to. Now, going back to the other question, should I do you world more than two times or look into another QBank? I personally, from my experience, do not recommend doing you world more than two times. 
I actually, during my dedicated, didn't even do UWorld two times. I had gotten through one round and then I didn't even finish halfway through my second round. So what worked for me was saving UWorld for my dedicated time before step one. And before that, during my basic sciences, I was using Kaplan QBank. So I always recommend to anyone who asks me to save UWorld during your dedicated or at least save it till your last semester of med school so that you have enough time to review all of UWorld and you don't use UWorld more than two times. I also don't think it's a bad idea to use more than one QBank during your dedicated. Again, I mentioned in my previous video that I also used Amboss during my dedicated, but I used it a little differently. My main QBank was UWorld and I did all my practice blocks with UWorld. For example, I did all my blocks timed and random to mimic the exam. And I used Amboss more as a secondary QBank. For example, if I wanted to quiz myself and I was out running errands and I had time to do maybe five questions here or there, I would do that through Amboss. I didn't sit down and do full blocks with Amboss. That was only UWorld I used to do my practice blocks with. So my advice to the people who are asking me who have already done UWorld one time and they haven't scheduled their step one or started dedicated yet is to save their second round of UWorld once they've entered dedicated and have scheduled their step one. Because I don't recommend doing UWorld more than two times. To me, if you do UWorld more than two times, I don't feel like that's really helping because at one point you'll start memorizing or remembering the questions and their answers. And that doesn't really help you in the long run. So instead, I would recommend to those people who still haven't scheduled step or started their dedicated and have already completed one round of UWorld, save your second round of UWorld for once you've started dedicated and instead maybe use another QBank like Amboss. Amos is a great QBank as well, and I definitely would have used that in my basic sciences over Kaplan if I knew about it earlier. So again, I want to say that UWorld is the best resource out there for step one prep, so you want to make sure you use that specifically during your dedicated time. Because if you use it earlier, you might forget some concepts or high yield material that you need to know for step. And in the meantime, you can use another QBank like Amboss or Kaplan. I didn't use the USMLE RX QBank, so I can't give any advice on that. But Kaplan was okay, like I, I enjoyed Kaplan during my basic sciences. But after using Amboss, I liked Amboss more than Kaplan, so I would recommend Amboss over Kaplan if you want something before you're dedicated to review with or during your basic sciences. So thank you for watching. I hope this helped anyone who was looking for inspiration or ideas or just looking for tips and advice in general. Again, I wanna point out that this is what worked for me through my experience and talking with others who have already taken step one. Again, take this with a grain of salt because what worked for me might not work for you or you might feel differently about QBanks. QBanks, you know, everyone learns differently. So you have to find a way that works in your favor. So again, I hope this helped anyone who was looking for tips and advice and I'll see you in my next video.